Thanks. So I'm going to uh, talk about uh, modular reconfigurable robots. Um, these robots are a little bit different than you might have seen before, like dancing robots or robot vacuum cleaners or, or industrial robot arms. Instead, these are robots that are, uh, can be attached together in different ways to do many different tasks. Um, so for example, you might have uh, a robot that can do move relatively simple in a simple way, uh, like this, or uh, if you take many of them and put them together, you can start to form uh, larger robots that can be attached into, di into uh, different configurations. Um, and the, the basic idea is if you can have robots that can form larger complex shapes, then they can do different tasks. And if the robot can reconfigure itself into different shapes, it gets even more interesting. So uh, researchers have been doing this for uh, several decades, and they've come up with many different ways to do reconfiguration. Um, and many different types of reconfiguration. And many of them can be classified into two styles. One of them is what we call lattice reconfiguration. So in, in lattice reconfiguration, the modules sit essentially on a lattice, and they move around on that lattice to form different shapes, um, which could be, uh, these modules could be rhombic dodecahedrons like he, are shown here, or they could be cubes or, or spheres or something like that. Uh, another style is what we call chain reconfiguration. So the, the modules can be attached end to end to form uh, chains, and so it could be something like an arm. Uh, and imagine if you had two robot arms that attached together, uh, that docked here, and then detached at the shoulder. These two arms could then become one long arm, and you could reconfigure like that. So here's some examples of lattice reconfiguration uh, uh, robots. And the interesting thing for, at least from a computer science point of view, is how do you program them? Each module has a computer on it, and you'd like the whole system to do something together to form a, a specific shape. And in this particular case, uh, modules are moving one at a time uh, to pre-assigned goal locations. Um, and here it's actually forming uh, a, a, the, what's called the digital X. At the time, I was working for Xerox, and this is the Xerox logo. We can just pretend this is the X in TEDx instead. <laughs> um, so, that, so that's one way of programming. And another example, instead of having the modules move one at a time, we could again pre-assign goal locations and then have them move all at the same time towards the goal location. So here you see the modules are running to their goal locations and once they reach that goal location, they stop. The problem here is that after several of the modules reach the goal location, some of them are blocked from reaching their, their goal location. So if you look at the top of the video, some of those guys that are moving around will never reach their goal location because they, they can't reach them. Uh, the modules in the middle there that are kind of wandering around, actually, I don't remember what those guys are. Those guys are, seem to be lost. Um, so a better way to do this would be to have uh, not predefined goal locations, but rather um, modules which are closest to a goal try to get to that goal location and then stop once they reach it. And the key here also is that you have a, a goal ordering um, so that when they reach a goal, they, the, the shape actually kind of grows out from a, a base uh, configuration. So in this case, there are 600 modules that are forming uh, a cup shape, like a teacup. Uh, so here are some more examples of the chain style, whereas the lattice style reconfiguration is very good at forming different shapes. The chain style instead um, can do things like locomotion and manipulation. So here there's a, a robot that's moving like a snake and a, another four-legged gate. Uh, we've got actually hundreds of different types of um, gates climbing a pole, climbing stairs. We have a six-legged robot that kind of jumps around. I'm not, I'm not going to show them to you today. If you want, you can look online. Um, they're all online. Uh, but instead, I'd like to focus a little bit more on the self-reconfiguration. So the bottom left corner here, you see a, a, uh, a biped, a two-legged uh, gate um, that my student is going to, actually, he's going to kick it, and it's going to fall apart. And this is something we call uh, self-reassembly after explosion. So. <laughs> Reconfigure, uh, reassembly is essentially the same thing as um, reconfiguration, and it shows how uh, systems can be somewhat robust. Uh, the modules have sensors on them, and each, each cluster has uh, an accelerometer, so the modules can tell what the direction of gravity is, um, and then they can self-write. That little blinking red light that you see is a smart camera, so every cluster has a smart camera, and the, the cameras actually look for the other clusters uh, to, to put themselves back together again. So th those clusters will, will wander around until they can find each other. On the right side, you see another uh, self-reconfiguration uh, example where the robot is rolling like a track, which is relatively fast, um, and then it forms into a snake. Uh, and here, the, it reconfigures into a snake because it, the rolling track is too tall to climb under 
uh, the, the stool, so uh, it's appropriate for it to do that. Again, now the, the, on the left side, the, the robot has the one that's fallen apart. It puts itself back together again, and so now it starts to again try to walk. Um, we put this video on YouTube, and we got the people saying, oh, no, the robot's you know, putting itself back together again. You can't kill it. Robots are going to take over the world. Um, <laughs> the, unfortunately, it's actually difficult to get the robots to do anything like without just to keep it from falling over. So uh, I think it may be a while before uh, we have anything like robots taking over the world. So another fun thing to do is to have um, robots in the human shape. So here we've got a robot with uh, two arms and two legs, and we can, we can see it can uh, walk fairly well. And people often think if you've got a robot that's in a human shape, it can do human-like tasks. And it turns out that that's actually very difficult. Uh, we have uh, here a tricycle, and we've shown that the, we can, we've got a, the modular robots to ride the tricycle. Uh, but it actually turned out to be much easier to do with just two legs, not to put the arms on or anything like that. Um, so uh, the, the key here is, if, especially if you have a reconfiguring system, you can reconfigure to the parts that you need um, and then get the tasks done a little bit easier. So we have, um, I've shown you a bunch of videos for uh, tasks like moving around, but we, we, we actually would like to have the robot do something useful, useful for people. So the classic grad student task is, robot, go to the refrigerator and bring me a cold beverage. Uh, so this is the... the, the some of my students put together this configuration has two arms and a wheel. Uh, it's a relatively small robot. It can just barely get the task done. It, so the robot weighs about 10 pounds. The door needs 10 pounds of force to open. Um, here you can see the, the two back wheels are actually off the ground, and it's almost going to fall over. Um, right now, we would like this task to be autonomous, but the, my student actually is off screen teleoperate, what's called teleoperating, he's telling the robot arms where to move and how to move the wheels and all that kind of stuff. Ideally, there would be sensors on the robot so the robot could tell when the door's open, it could see where the, 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 um, the fruit, the, the juice containers are, and it could grab the, the juice, all that kind of stuff. Um, but it, we're, So we're also, I have to admit, we're, we're kind of cheating here. Uh, in order to get this to work, we had to take the whole refrigerator and tilt it forward a little bit because the door was a little bit too hard to open. Um, uh, and also the, uh, the juice, if you know, we are successful in terms of grabbing the juice and getting it out. Uh, it would be really difficult to do this fully autonomously because um, just the, having to understand that the wheels are off the ground, that the, where everything is, is actually very difficult. Uh, another way we cheated, I don't know if you can see, but the juice is actually empty. <laughs> So I'd like to tell, tell you a little bit about the, our latest system, um, which is called S'mores. Uh, this is a self-assembling modular robot for extreme shape shifting. Whereas before we talked about the lattice reconfiguration systems, which are good at reconfiguring into different shapes, and the chain reconfiguration system, which can do tasks, this system can do, is, can do both. So, uh, and actually can do a third thing, which we call mobile reconfiguration. As you can see, they drive around on the environment and they can dock and undock from each other. So to do the chain reconfiguration, essentially there you can see it's forming like an elbow. It can form, you can attach a bunch of them end to end, and, and you can have arms. If you had a grid of them, um, then it could do something more like the lattice reconfiguration. Uh, and essentially what you have to do for lattice reconfiguration is to be able to move from one lattice location on another, which you'll see in a minute. These systems actually dock and undock magnetically. The red and green dots show the polarity of magnets. Um, and they, they attach and unattach that way. We exploit uh, the property of magnets, which are in the fact that they're strong in tension, but weak in shear. So when it wants to undock, it actually sticks a key out, twists the, the key out, and then undocks that way. So um, what we'd like to do, ultimately, is to have a lot more than two. Right now, so far, we've only built two. We're in the process of building 30 modules um, for a grant that we recently got from the National Science Foundation. Uh, along with Cornell, uh, we are, the, the goal of the project is to actually make these systems useful. Um, and uh, one of the hardest things, so we're going to make 30, and that's pretty straightforward. The harder thing is to actually program them. Um, so for example, if we wanted to do the task of going to the refrigerator and, and getting a, uh, a beverage out, you could do it with um, a lot of small arms. Instead of having one long arm that's relatively weak, you could have five or six arms that are, and in parallel, pull that door open. 
And then once the door was open, you could take those six arms and attach them end to end to make one long arm that could reach to the top shelf, grab that beverage, and then again reconfigure into uh, something that could walk or whatever to ultimately deliver that beverage. Um, so we're, we're not quite there yet. Uh, we are, we've come up with a way of um, program, but the way we plan to do it is something we call behaviors. So a behavior could be something like you have a, a, an arm and uh, you, you program up one position here and then another position there. And so when you run the program, it, it does this motion. And so if you get an arm that goes up to the refrigerator, it does that motion and it'll hopefully open the, the refrigerator. Uh, another behavior might be getting the robot to the refrigerator. So you change these behaviors end to end and then you can actually get the behavior that you want. What we hope to do ultimately is, uh, so right here, this is a video of a simulation that we have. Um, and we're going to put this on the web and make this open source so that hopefully we can get um, the community, people out there who are interested in programming, uh, able to help us to build a library of these behaviors. Hopefully we can get thousands of behaviors so that we can uh, make the robot not only go to the refrigerator and get a beverage, but do other useful tasks as well. Um, so the, you can go to that website and hopefully uh, in a couple months when we have it up and ready, um, help us out to uh, get these things to work. Thank you.